<sighs> man, you can really start to understand why uh, retail investors are being referred to as dumb money. <laughs> it's crazy. So this, I was literally about to go to bed. Okay, it's like twelve thirty in the morning, and you know when I'm in my bed, I normally go through the news briefings of today because I was at the clinics, and I saw this. This headline came up and I was like, you know what? I need to record a video because this is silly, okay? This is ridiculous. Retail traders bailed on the market right before stocks rebounded. Right, okay. Today's trading session was insane, okay? I tweeted this earlier, right? So this was around market close, about 9 p.m. I said, why did today feel like the great shakeout? Meaning, you know, why does it feel like people got shook out of their positions, right? Because I had the notification here. You see, the stocks mount stunning comeback on Monday with the Dow closing in the green after earlier dropping 1,000 points, okay? It pretty much was down 1,000 points. Like, these kind of moves were insane. Like, you've got the entire indices moving like a bloody penny stock, right? And you can see another notification here was the Nasdaq turns positive after being down 4.9%, right? The Nasdaq was down 4.9% and finished green. It finished green. And I was absolutely spot on with my suspicion. Like, why did this feel like the great shakeout? It's because it absolutely was. Dumb money ran. Retail investors ran. You guys ran, you left your positions, you exited, you went straight to the door and institutions were like, yep, thank you very much. We got you guys. And then the market finished green. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So retail traders bailed on the market right before stocks rebounded. And you can see here, this chart represents the cumulative retail order imbalance for obviously today's trading session. And you can see by 12 o'clock. <laughs> By 12 o'clock, it was at the highest level of retail order imbalances in the billions, guys. Okay, look at what the article reads. So, wondering what the force was that turned an orderly decline into a full-blown route this morning? Mom and pop bailing. Okay, so retail investors. So, in a spasm of panic selling early Monday, retail investors offloaded a net $1.36 billion worth of stock by noon. <laughs> By noontime, retail investors had offloaded that amount worth of stocks. Insane. Most of it within the first hour of trading. Retail investors are dumb money. I, I completely understand it now. I completely understand it. So by his estimates, shares disposals were 3.9 standard deviation heavier than the full day average in the previous 12 months retail are just getting out and i've been talking about this on my channel in a number of videos now and people are saying oh you know emmanuel you, you're just you're reaching you're reaching i'm just like look we can see the evidence there you know i showed you many charts of palantir we're seeing the institution ownership going through the roof and we're seeing retail ownership going to the floor okay this is proof this is proof right here. It's the exact same thing with companies like Open Door, Hims. These companies are performing great, but retail, they're running for the clouds. They're running for the hills. However, institutions continue to load up. It's the institutions that were biased today, not retail. Retail got out within the first hour <laughs> and it was the institutions that came in and that's why we finished green today. The institutions were essentially buying up $1.36 billion worth of stock that retail investors panic sold by noon and most of it within the first hour it's man while the rush for the exits helps drive the nasdaq 100 down almost five percent in monday morning trading it's possible the news wasn't entirely bad for bulls on the lookout for signs of what seller exhaustion okay <laughs> this is insane uh, major averages staged a breathtaking reversal in the hours after the wave of sell orders landed. One of several such turnarounds in recent weeks. Stocks ended higher, erasing a 4% plunge in the S&P 500. So just think about it. Think about all of the retail investors that panic sold within the first hour, right? As the market was tanking. And then to see the market finish in the green. So you just realize your losses for no reason. It's, it's so dumb. Oh my goodness, it's so dumb.
So in the short term, it's a good indicator that retail investors are capitulating. Facts, okay? Which is leading to perhaps a temporary bottom. And this is exactly what retail investors are doing right now. Like they're not even looking at the fundamentals. They're not even looking at the financials of the company. They've, all of their due diligence that they've done, you know, their DCFs, <laughs> you know, all of that's out of the window, okay? Like retail, they don't care about that anymore. They just capit just get me out. Pretty much get me out at all costs. Nothing else matters. They're just capitulating out of their positions uh, without a care in the world. And for what? To see the market recover and finish in the green. You know, uh, if you look at the stock market psychology, this pretty much sums it up in, in general. You know, we've been through a lot of that fear stage already, in my opinion, but we're now reaching capitulation. Okay. And there are also other finance YouTubers that are falling into this capitulation bracket right now. Do I think this is the bottom? I mean, if you look at the psychology chart, we still have despair to go, okay? So if retail investors are only really at this capitulation stage, then the answer would be that we still have a bit more to go before we reach that bottom. Like, I don't think we are in despair yet. But you never know, this capitulation stage might be the bottom. It's never an exact science, but essentially, it's pretty much showing the emotions that retail investors go through uh, in different market cycles and their psychology. Um, and yeah, we might not necessarily need to get to despair, but they've already started capitulating. You know, we've got the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. Uh, we've got uh, Microsoft's earnings, I believe, tomorrow and Apple's earnings on um, Thursday. And we know pretty much Apple and Microsoft alone combined, uh, they weigh over 20% of the NASDAQ 100. So based on how we saw Netflix report their earnings, I mean, er I mean, earnings for Netflix was great. However, it was the outlook that caused Netflix to tank. Okay. So if Apple was to report maybe a slower outlook, then, you know, we could see a similar reaction to what we saw with uh, Netflix in Apple. And, and Apple single-handedly can bring the Nasdaq down even further. And that's probably where we can drop into this despair part, okay? And I was sharing this with my Discord in our morning briefing. So every morning I give a briefing to my Discord. Well, every trading morning, should I say. And um, I reminded my Discord of this report. If you remember, very early on in December, Apple told the suppliers that the iPhone demand weakens ahead of holiday periods, okay? But at the time, Wall Street didn't care, okay? Institution, institution money didn't care. They were running to Apple as a flight for safety, okay? But if Apple were telling us that the demand for iPhones were slowing during one of their best periods, which is the holiday periods, which ends in December, so that's Q4, what do you really expect Apple's outlook would be going into Q1 and Q2? It's not going to be good, okay? It's not going to be good because we already know demand for iPhone demand for iPhones are slowing. So it's very, very possible, it's very feasible that we can still get to this despair stage and we're going to see retail exit even more and it's just going to be bloody. So in my opinion, I don't think it's done until we get Apple and Microsoft, get them out of the way, okay? Uh, let them probably tank the market even more and then, yo, it, it's time, okay? We, because after despair, we begin the takeoff stage and then the first sell-off, media attention, enthusiasm, greed, and we just go through this cycle yet again, okay? The key thing is don't panic. Just know what you own and why you own it, man. Like, just don't throw your research in the bin. If you've held for this long, remember, you only lose when you sell. I mean, I got this message from uh, on IG. Someone sent me this message uh, earlier today, right, during the whole panic sell-off that we saw. This person sent me a message saying they're starting to panic themselves, okay? I'm getting messages like this that people are starting to panic. Why are you panicking, okay? You only lose when you sell. If the companies that you own have strong fundamentals, growing fundamentals, and growing financials, what, what, what's there to panic? If you haven't got any money to buy any more and to own more of these companies, just sit back, relax, and chill, Unless you're playing this game with leverage or you're in margin or you've taken out a loan to play uh, or you've taken out a loan to invest in stocks, you've really got nothing to worry about. Just chill. Let the market go through its cycles. And, you know, lastly, I'll just leave you with this, okay? Warren Buffett said that widespread fear is your friend. Personal fear is your enemy, okay? So for me, I am loving this widespread fear because, I mean, we're seeing companies now trading at ridiculous valuations. 
And again, it's all thanks to what? Retail investors uh, just bailing, all right? So don't be a part of the dumb money, all right? You know what you own, why you own it. You know, if you're not going to buy more, then just sit back, relax, enjoy the ride and just enjoy this correction, you know, enjoy, whether it's a correction or a crash, whatever it is, enjoy it. Because we found out that the NASDAQ is on track for its worst January ever as volatility gets to panic, okay? So essentially, they're going to write stories about this January. So January 2022 is going to go down in history, okay? And, you know, when you read all of these books, Richer, Wiser, Happier, this is the book I'm currently reading at the moment, Only the Best Will Do. So I just started reading this book because, I've been, because I'm done with Peter Till's uh, Zero to One, fantastic book. But so far, this is very good. But, you know, when they talk about these great investors, you know, you hear about how they grew their wealth in 1987. They grew their wealth in the Great Depression. You know, they grew their, they grew their wealth in the dot-com bubble. They grew their wealth in 0809. They grew their wealth during the flash crash. You know, you hear about all of these amazing crashes in the past and how they grew their wealth. We are going to grow our wealth in the January 2022 capitulation or whatever they want to title this okay so a couple of years down the line they're going to be talking about this moment right here and you just got to enjoy it <laughs> just enjoy it <laughs> all right i'm out i'm out i'm going to bed thanks for watching i'll catch you next one peace